The story of this fairy tale begins in a beautiful kingdom where a little girl named Ella is born. Ella's mother is a fairy who used to live with her sister, meaning their whole family is full of fairies with magical powers, and they would grant people's wishes. Ella's mother is extremely happy because she has such a wonderful daughter. She was preparing to celebrate all these happy moments. But then, a large fairy arrives. A very good fairy, but one who always causes trouble wherever she goes. When Ella's mother and aunt find out the large fairy is coming, they hide Ella so she won't meet her. However, the large fairy instantly teleports into their home using her magic and finds Ella. She lovingly picks Ella up and tries to play with her, but Ella starts crying for some reason. So, the large fairy calms her down with her magic. Then, she gives Ella a gift, a spell that will make her so good-natured that she won't be able to refuse anyone who asks her for something. Ella's mother and aunt protest, saying it's not a real gift and will cause trouble in the future. But the large fairy insists, saying her gift is final and can't be taken back. She assures them that Ella will grow up to be beautiful. From that day, the large fairy's spell began to influence Ella. As she grew older, she couldn't refuse anyone who asked her for anything. Ella's mother worried that people might take advantage of her because of this spell, and this fear started to come true. Whenever anyone asked Ella for something, she would be unable to say no. She even faced trouble at school, where other kids would pester her to do things for them. Then, one day, Ella's mother became gravely ill, taking her last breaths. She called Ella close and had a serious conversation, reminding her that the powers she had were special. She made Ella promise never to reveal her gift to anyone. Since many people would try to take advantage if they found out, Ella's mother explained all these things to her. She also gave Ella a very beautiful locket. Shortly after that, her mother passed away, and Ella became very sad, but she continued to follow her mother's advice. Over time, Ella grew up and now she was 15 years old. Ella was truly very beautiful, and she had never taken off that locket from her neck. After her mother's passing, Ella's father took care of her. However, recently, a king had seized all of Ella's father's properties without providing any evidence. So, to support the family, Ella's father married a wealthy lady, but it was purely for money. Ella's stepmother had two daughters, and unsurprisingly, neither the stepmother nor her stepsisters liked Ella. When they came to live in the house, her stepsisters started bothering her. One day, when they saw the locket around Ella's neck, they said they liked it and demanded she give it to them. Since Ella couldn't say no to anyone, she took off the locket and gave it to them. Taking advantage of the situation, both women also demanded her room, meaning they wanted Ella's room for themselves. Ella, once again, didn't refuse and handed over her room, moving her things elsewhere. Now, we are shown the prince of the kingdom. He was very kind and good-hearted, but his father had passed away many years ago, leaving the kingdom's responsibilities in the hands of his uncle. The prince's uncle managed the kingdom, as the prince was still young and would only inherit the throne once he was older. We soon learned that the prince's uncle was very wicked. He could do anything for his own benefit, even taking someone's life. He loved to seize people's properties unfairly. But the prince knew none of this. Meanwhile, Ella and her best friend had come to a market where many people from the kingdom had gathered, as the prince was supposed to visit. The prince's uncle was there, giving a speech to the people. And soon, the prince makes his entrance. All the girls in the kingdom were infatuated with him, as he was incredibly handsome. However, while all the other girls went crazy over him, Ella paid him no attention at all. In fact, she was quite angry with him because his family had taken over her father's land. When the prince came up to give his speech, Ella and her best friend began chanting against him. The prince noticed this, but instead of being angry, he found himself drawn to Ella. He admired her boldness, especially since she knew he was the prince but still stood against him. In that moment, the prince found himself falling in love with Ella. However, Ella's stepsisters were also at the event. Noticing the prince's attention on Ella, they went over to scold her and told her to leave immediately. Due to her curse, Ella couldn't refuse and had to walk away. Meanwhile, 
The prince tried to search for her in the crowd, but couldn't find her. Eventually, it was time for him to leave, but the other girls wouldn't let him go. He ran towards the forest to escape the crowd, and as he did, he unexpectedly collided with Ella, who was on a path nearby. They both fell to the ground, and in an attempt to hide from the girls chasing him, the prince quickly led Ella to a hidden spot until the crowd passed by. Once they were alone, Ella began to walk away, ignoring the prince entirely. Curious, he asked her why she was behaving so coldly, saying he only wanted to be friends. But Ella wouldn't listen and kept moving. Determined to stop her, the prince commanded, Stop right there. Due to her curse, Ella's feet froze in place, and she couldn't move. Just then, a horse-drawn carriage began speeding toward her. Ella, still bound by the magic, couldn't step aside, and the carriage kept coming straight at her. Just as the carriage was about to collide with Ella, the prince rushed in and saved her, pulling her to safety. They looked perfect together in that moment. But then, Ella's stepsisters arrived and, seeing them together, grew suspicious. Ella's older stepsister, who liked the prince and wanted to marry him herself, told Ella and her younger sister to leave so she could talk to the prince alone. But the prince, uninterested in her, quickly made an excuse and left, which deeply bothered Ella's older stepsister. Ella's older stepsister began to wonder why Ella, who was younger, always obeyed her every command. Curious and suspicious, she decided to test this. She took Ella to a shop and ordered her to steal all the shoes there. Although Ella protested, her sister commanded her to steal the shoes, and Ella, unable to resist due to her curse, went into the shop and started gathering all the shoes. The stepsisters took advantage of Ella, making her steal various things for them. But one day, while she was stealing, a security guard spotted her and started chasing her. Ella, frightened, ran away as fast as she could and was managing to evade the guard. However, the guard yelled, stop right there, and due to the magic, Ella was compelled to freeze in place. The police caught her and took her to jail. When Ella's stepmother found out, she quickly paid to have Ella released. However, her older stepsister began accusing Ella, telling their mother that she had stolen on purpose and that it was her friend's idea. Her stepsister even whispered to Ella, instructing her to say that her friend had told her to steal. Ella, unable to refuse, repeated the lie, saying, My friend told me to steal, which made her stepmother furious with her friend. When Ella's friend came to visit, her stepmother angrily demanded that she end their friendship, saying that the friend was a terrible influence. Ella, still under her curse, couldn't refuse her stepmother's demand. Ella, although heartbroken, had no choice but to end her friendship with her best friend due to the curse controlling her actions. Her best friend had been with her since childhood, and the thought of never seeing her again deeply saddened Ella. Seeing her sorrow, Ella's aunt came to comfort her. She advised Ella that if she wanted freedom from this curse, she would have to find the large fairy who had given her this gift and convince her to take it back. Since only the large fairy had the power to remove it, she was Ella's only hope. But Ella didn't even know where to start. She had no idea where to find the large fairy, and this made her feel even more hopeless. To lift her spirits, her aunt brought out a magical book, explaining that a while back, she had cast a spell on a friend that had gone wrong, trapping him inside this book. Now, however, her friend was incredibly wise and could reveal the location of anyone. Ella's aunt suggested that with this book's help, Ella could track down the large fairy. When Ella opened the book, she found an enchanted map revealing that the large fairy was in a place called Giant Valley, far from where she lived. But with this information, Ella made up her mind to travel to Giant Valley to end her curse. She thought it through and got her aunt's permission, and the next day, she set off on her journey with the magical book in hand. As she made her way through the forest, the book's map guided her step by step, showing her current location and direction. Eventually, as she neared Giant Valley, Ella heard some shouting in the distance. She soon discovered a group of troublemakers harassing a small elf, taunting and torturing him. Moved by his cries for help, Ella approached the men and demanded that they stop. The men laughed at Ella, dismissing her as just a normal girl. 
And what are you going to do about it? Break our legs. They taunted. As soon as they said that, Ella found herself actually breaking their legs, suddenly equipped with unexpected fighting skills. She managed to defeat all of them, surprising herself with her newfound strength. Since they taunted Ella to break their legs, she began beating each one of them and chased them away. Afterward, Ella freed the elf tied to the log. The elf thanked her and introduced himself as Russell. He explained to Ella that people often looked down upon elves, thinking they had no value in life. However, he shared his dream of becoming a lawyer, though such opportunities were not granted to elves. He mentioned he would surely bring this matter up with the prince. The elf expressed his gratitude to Ella and started conversing with her. Ella then asked Russell if he knew anything about Giant Valley, as she needed to go there urgently. Russell replied that Giant Valley was a very dangerous place and advised her not to go alone. He then offered to accompany her, saying that since she helped him, he wanted to help her too. Ella agreed, and together, using the magic book, they continued their journey forward. The two made a great team. Russell then took Ella to his village, where they prepared for the next leg of their journey. Meanwhile, back in the kingdom, preparations were underway for the prince's coronation. The prince was about to take the throne, a matter that did not sit well with his uncle, who secretly wanted the throne for himself. With the prince becoming king, a marriage announcement followed. He declared that he would choose a bride from among the village girls. Invitations were sent out to everyone in the village, including one to Ella's home. Since Ella was away, her aunt received the invitation and was thrilled. However, Ella's stepmother soon arrived, took the invitation, and, upon learning that the king had invited Ella, decided to go herself, pretending to be Ella. Her stepsisters were overjoyed and immediately began making preparations. Meanwhile, Ella and Russell were shown on their journey, navigating towards Giant Valley with the help of the map. As they traveled, Ella and Russell noticed that several elves were being taken far away for reasons unknown to Ella. They continued their journey towards Giant Valley, but soon, large monsters appeared and captured them. These monsters were cannibals who ate humans, and they began preparing to devour Ella and Russell. Just as the monsters were about to attack, the prince arrived with his soldiers. The prince bravely fought off the monsters, ensuring that neither Ella nor the elf was harmed. Together with his soldiers, he defeated the monsters, but instead of hurting them, he gave them a final chance to leave, so they retreated. Ella was surprised to see the prince there, especially since his wedding was soon to take place. The prince asked Ella what she was doing in such a dangerous forest. Ella explained her mission to find the great sorceress in Giant Valley. Hearing the name Giant Valley, the prince offered to accompany her, suggesting she could use some protection. Ella hesitated but couldn't refuse, so she set out for Giant Valley with the prince and his soldiers. The prince seemed quite happy to be talking with Ella along the way, but soon, Russell approached him. Russell explained that he dreamed of becoming a lawyer, but his uncle, who was currently the king, only allowed humans to become lawyers, disregarding elves altogether. Russell shared his desire to become a lawyer to bring justice to everyone. The prince responded that he currently didn't have the power to change things, as his uncle handled such matters, but once he became king, he would focus on these issues. Hearing this, Ella encouraged the prince, telling him that he had considerable power even now and that it was his responsibility as a prince to help his people. She emphasized that he didn't need to wait until he was king to make a difference. The prince was impressed with Ella's wisdom. She was not only beautiful but also incredibly insightful. After traveling for a while, they finally reached Giant Valley. Upon entering the farms of the valley, they noticed that everyone there was enormous, almost like monsters. However, they soon discovered that these giants were being forced to work under harsh conditions, and it was the prince's uncle who controlled everything there. His soldiers treated the giants poorly. Determined, Ella spread out to search for the great sorceress to break her curse, but she was nowhere to be found, leaving Ella feeling disappointed and doubtful about the sorceress's presence in Giant Valley. Taking a break, Ella and the prince found themselves in an area where a celebration was being prepared, and the locals seemed cheerful. The prince suggested they stay there for the night, as the forest became extremely dangerous after dark. 
Although Ella was reluctant, she agreed because the prince insisted. Meanwhile, the prince took the opportunity to speak with the leaders of the giants, resolving the old enmity between them and his kingdom with careful diplomacy. He also arranged a place for them to stay. Watching the prince handle matters so wisely impressed Ella. She began to feel a growing admiration for him. As the evening progressed, they danced together, sharing stories and enjoying each other's company. During their conversation, Ella opened up about her quest to find her godmother, the great fairy, to remove the magical gift, a curse of sorts, that had burdened her since childhood. She explained how the search had become challenging, with the fairy nowhere to be found. Hearing this, the prince suggested they could use the kingdom's records, which contained information about everyone, to locate the great fairy. Ella was thrilled by the idea. The following day, they all returned to the kingdom, where Ella's stepmother and stepsisters were already waiting for her. In fact, the stepmother had brought her daughters to arrange their marriage with the prince. But the prince went directly to the chamber where the location of the great fairy could be discovered, leaving Ella to her tasks. Meanwhile, the prince spoke to his uncle, telling him that he liked Ella and intended to marry her. This news displeased his uncle, who wanted to remain the king and was determined to prevent the marriage. The uncle summoned Ella's stepsisters and presented them with an offer. He would arrange their marriage to the prince, but they would need to send Ella away. The stepsisters found this task easy, realizing that due to magic, Ella couldn't refuse anything she was told. When the prince's uncle learned of this, he decided to exploit it. He soon called Ella into his chamber and told her that the prince would propose to her soon. But when he did, she would have to refuse him and stab him with a knife. He even handed her a knife, knowing that the magic would force her to keep it. Worried about this, Ella immediately went to her elf friend. She explained everything to him and then tied herself to a tree far from the palace because she was determined not to harm the prince due to the curse. Ella instructed her elf friend to return to Giant Valley and gather the elves and giants to confront the prince's uncle and reclaim the kingdom, as he posed a great threat to the prince. The elf set off to carry out Ella's instructions. As night began to fall, Ella felt the pull of the curse, causing her to start moving toward the palace against her will. In her heart, she prayed that the great fairy would come to help her, hoping she could break the curse for good. Suddenly, the great fairy landed from the sky, fulfilling Ella's wish. Although the fairy had teleported to another place, she accidentally arrived there, and Ella was overjoyed. Ella began talking to the fairy. She explained that the curse she received in exchange for a gift in her childhood had become a heavy burden on her. She pleaded with the fairy to remove it, but the fairy replied that once a spell is cast, it cannot be undone. Therefore, Ella would have to bear this curse for the rest of her life unless she could break it herself. Instead of helping Ella, the fairy released her and magically dressed her in beautiful clothes. Ella looked stunning, and the fairy sent her toward the palace. Once inside, Ella started acting strangely. However, when the prince saw her in that dress, he became utterly captivated. He took Ella to a room and began to profess his love, as he had loved her from the very beginning. But under the influence of the curse, Ella felt powerless. She held the knife, and when the prince proposed to her, she raised the knife to stab him. At that moment, she felt incredibly helpless. She didn't want to hurt him, but the curse was compelling her. Just then, Ella remembered her mother's words. Her mother had told her that no curse or magic is stronger than a human heart. If she could control her mind and listen to her heart, the curse would not be able to control her. Taking her mother's advice to heart, Ella concentrated and listened to her feelings. She made a tremendous effort and eventually dropped the knife, gaining control over herself. The curse was broken. However, the shocking part was that the prince had seen the knife in her hand, leading him to believe that Ella had come to kill him. He ordered his soldiers and uncle to capture her. Ella was thrown into prison, and the prince, unaware of the full truth, misunderstood her intentions. He left for his coronation, thinking ill of her. But soon after, the elf arrived with a great army, determined to free Ella. He went directly to the prison and managed to release her, leading her back toward the prince. 
However, Ella noticed in her book that her uncle had cunningly placed poisonous gas in the prince's crown. If he wore it, he would become completely paralyzed. Then Ella rushed to the place where the prince's coronation was taking place, determined to prevent her uncle from seizing the throne. Everyone was seated, but Ella shouted about her uncle's plan, revealing that he intended to kill the prince by poisoning the crown with gases that would paralyze him. The crowd gasped at her revelations. In a moment of desperation, she ordered her snake to bite the prince and kill him. Just then, Ella arrived, intervened, and pushed the snake away, saving the prince. She informed him that it was his uncle who had poisoned the crown in an attempt to usurp the throne. Realizing he had been exposed, the uncle openly admitted to his ambition, claiming that the prince was unworthy of the throne and that he would do anything to remain king. In a fit of rage, the uncle put the poisoned crown on his own head, only to realize too late that it was the source of the deadly gas. He fell to the ground, paralyzed and dying. The prince finally understood how Ella had helped him and saved his life from his uncle's treachery. However, the prince's stepsisters tried to reassert their dominance, telling Ella to leave. But Ella laughed and told them that she had broken the curse, and now she would do as her heart desired. Frightened, the stepsisters fled. The prince then declared that after becoming king, he would marry Ella. They got married right there, marking the end of their story.